Hello YouTube, Ready Reptiles here with another video and in today's video I'm going to talk to you about why tortoises live so long. So hope you all enjoyed today's video and let's get started. Alright guys, so in my hand right here is a young, what I believe to be a female cherry headed tortoise. As you can see it's very beautiful but this clip basically I want to explain to you something called negligible sinensis and negligible sinensis is a term uh, it's used to deno organisms that uh, do not exhibit evidence of biological aging, such as reduction in reproductive capability, uh, functional decline, and rising death rates with age. So in essence, cold-blooded animals display this negligible senensis, and they don't lose their ability to reproduce over time, and their death rates don't increase with age. Versus a human animal or um, you know, a human in uh, something that is warm-blooded, over time, once you reach sexual maturity, reproductive age, and reproductive capability, once we have, you know, we've produced viable offspring and our body has reached that peak, we start to decline over time versus tortoises and cold-blooded animals don't have that, you know, limit or that uh, capability that they must stop. It's been known that there's some tortoises that reproduce even in their 80s and 90s, and that's something that uh, warm-blooded creatures such as humans don't have that capability to do. So these animals basically stay at a certain level of fitness until something terrible happens like disease or predation. Uh, in the wild, in a perfect world, these animals wouldn't experience poaching. They wouldn't experience severe predation. Uh, for example, the Galapagos tortoise, the Aldabra tortoise, don't have native predators on their island. But since the invasion of humans and disease introduction, that's basically their leading cause of, um, of you know, eradication especially with poaching and there's certain conservation issues that are going out there and we're obviously trying to fight for the development of those animals but uh those animals such as the galapagos such as the aldabras uh are pretty much the epitome of what negligible uh sinensis is and as you can see with most tortoises and pretty much all cold-blooded species they last a lot longer they have a much larger longevity than a warm-blooded animal would so as you can see here this is a little cherry head and this is one of the examples of an animal that can last about 50 60 even 80 years you know depending on how the record sets uh another thing that people don't take into account is uh location and you know pretty much environmental factors and environmental needs a tortoise that comes from an area where it's severely cold or severely warm uh, will adapt differently to a tortoise that has the opposite climate uh, and that's something that people don't think about when they purchase tortoises such as sulcata such as redfoots that come from a desert climate or in this case a cherry head right here would come from a jungle more high humidity high arid environment so you bring these animals into a, a climate that is a lot colder such as up north or different countries and different environments they won't do as well so that's another cause of probably that would be another reason uh, let's call it natural disasters or natural factors that could cause and lead to the death of a tortoise but uh in essence negligible sinensis is basically the ability for a cold-blooded animal uh, to basically keep going as it ages, not versus, versus sinensis, which for a, a human and a warm-blooded animal, it would be the, you know, we decline eventually. So that's one thing I wanted to talk about that's pretty interesting and we don't really see that often. And I don't see people explain that too much. So once again, here's the chariot tortoise and that is negligible sinensis. All right, so here's one of my female sulcata tortoises, and this is the third largest tortoise in the world, the largest continental species, and they do live very long. You know, they've the record is 160 years old for the oldest one that's been on record, but I'm sure there's in the wild and other cases have lasted longer. Uh, she right now is about 10 years old, but in this clip, I want to talk about the hay flick limit, and this is another reason for the lengthy life, and the hay flick limit... Um, it's the number of times a normal human cell population will be divided before the cell division stops. And uh, in cold-blooded creatures, the cell division is a lot longer and a lot more repetitive than what it would be in a warm-blooded animal. In this case, we're going to use humans as an example. For a human, the hay flick limit is about 40 to 60 times throughout their lifespan. And for a uh, cold-blooded creature such as a tortoise, for example, a Galapagos tortoise's hay flick limit would be about 125. So if it's the, the cell division is that much uh, more rapid and much... Uh, you know much more in quantity than a human would be uh they obviously have the chance to live longer because um since it's such a high uh, cell division and the limit is bigger there's less stress on the cell development uh they uh they basically don't go through so much stress and that's probably one of the main reasons why they last so long so especially uh, tortoises like the sulcata here who you know they will last long and have known to last a long time uh their cell division must be in the hundreds 120s such as the galapagos tortoise so that's something that's also interesting that uh it's based, it's a theory the hay flick limit um it's also i don't believe it's been proven but it's something that i read about and uh, i've always had the interest in so i wanted to give you guys more information on that 
So the hay flick limit is basically the cell division and how much it does over the lifespan of an animal. So like I said before, humans is 40 to 60 times and an animal such as the Galapagos tortoise or a tortoise in general is about 125, maybe in the hundreds, in the 90s area. So more cell division, the longer you live. And another thing that I didn't mention with the hay flick limit is that uh, it's believed to be uh, be caused by it. the limit is like so since it's not a, an infinite amount of cell like cell division and cell reproduction, uh, it is thought to be that it's caused by chromosomes. That this limit is caused by chromosomes, and basically once you reach that limit, we start to decline, you know, in a in a downward motion, ultimately causing our death, and that's why uh, it's. It's basically that's one of the things our cells do and it's a natural process and we don't know 100% why uh, tortoises and cold-blooded creatures live so long but uh, through cellular research and, and um, you know molecular you know intelligence we're trying to figure out these things and each day we're learning much 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 more so uh, that's something to think about is uh, the hay flick limit and uh, negligible sinensis those are two things that uh, that I it's pretty interesting and it's kind of main factors as to why these tortoises and specifically cold-blooded creatures in general have such a lasting long life. All right, guys, so this is Ganesh, my youngest male Sokata tortoise. And in this clip, I'm going to use him to speak about metabolism in tortoises and metabolism in cold-blooded creatures in general. So cold-blooded animals and tortoises have a very slow metabolism, which essentially means that they burn energy at a slower rate, uh, simil uh, you know, at a slower rate versus a faster and a, a smaller animal would. Since these tortoises, this specific tortoise will get large in size. Uh, their metabolism slows down and they burn less energy, which all means less harm and less stress into the cells in their bodies. So a slower lifestyle basically means that they have a longer life. And uh, a lot of this is due to the fact that uh, where they come from, they're constantly grazing and they have a, such a great diet for them. In the Sokata's case, they will be eating a high fibrous, you know, low protein diet low in starch and things of that sort and they're always constantly eating grasses and that and grazing and grazing and leafy greens which have very good nutrients and in part of that their digestive system is very similar to that of a humans but they are the mo the animal that can absorb the most nutrients out of all organisms that's due in part to a strong enzyme they have in their stomach and that allows them to absorb these nutrients that through the food that they eat so since they're constantly eating uh you know greens and things of that sort they're absorbing all these nutrients and that's another reason why we believe that they last so long because they have a slow metabolism but they're eating nutritional things so that's another thing that i wanted to explain uh it's very interesting a lot of phenomenons that go in and are involved into the longevity and the lifestyle of a tortoise so i wanted to explain that so right here i have goobs and another female of mine that are reproducing at the moment but uh to explain to you and give you an example of a very good case of a tortoise that has lasted so long through a negligible sinensis, through the hay flick limit, and through a good metabolism, is Jonathan. And Jonathan was and still is a Aldabra tortoise from the Seychelles Islands. And this animal right now, I believe, uh, resides in St. Helena and has lasted for such a long time. He is 187 years old at the moment, uh, born in 1832, and basically has lasted through two world wars and many other things. So this tortoise has lasted so long, and that's through that's a good example and a good evident reason as to why these three things that i explained take in part into the longevity of a tortoise's lifestyle so i wanted to explain that and basically give you guys an example and just something you guys can think about and do a little bit more research on and to see why this tortoise lasted so long so that's pretty cool so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video like rate comment subscribe and please leave me any questions and comments down below you guys want to see i hope i gave you guys a little bit more information educated you guys on the longevity of tortoises and you know negligible sinensis hay flick limit and metabolism of a tortoise so hope you all enjoy and thanks for watching see you my fellow herpers